Hey guys, I'm Jordan and you're watching Fixbook. After watching this video, your car problems stand about as much a chance as this laptop does against my hot lid. Now, make sure you stay tuned so you can see what happened to the laptop at the end of this video. And as always, don't forget to subscribe, like, and leave a comment down below. Okay guys, and today I'm going to be showing you how to replace the rear brake pads and rotors for your Subaru. Okay guys, and the tools we'll need for today is a 14mm socket, a 12mm socket, a 3 8 ratchet, a flathead screwdriver, a C-clamp, a crossbar or a breaker bar and a 19mm socket. Also, I use some disc brake caliper grease, a jack stand, and a jack. Now with all that said, let's go ahead and begin today's project. And the first thing you'll want to do before you lift up the car is go ahead and take a flathead screwdriver. We're just going to reach in there, pop your little cap off there, and then you'll take a crossbar or a breaker bar 19 millimeter, and we'll go ahead and break each one of these lug nuts loose. So when we go ahead and lift it off, we'll be able to take those lug nuts off without any problems. Okay, guys, now I'm going to take you below the car here and show you where you're going to want to put your jack and jack stands. Now, we've got a couple places here. Your jack stands themselves could go right below there we're gonna see that control arm looking thing right there and right at the end there and we'll see on the other side the piece where we go we got a bolt sticking out there right there where my finger is kind of touching it's kind of bad shot there we go right there along that place right under there you can put a jack stand there and then and right there right on that center piece is where you're gonna want to sit your jack stand so um, that's pretty much where you're gonna lift up the car so now, we'll just want to finish taking off this wheel right here. I'll go ahead and set my wheel off to the side. Next, we'll be working on removing this caliper right here. Okay guys, the next thing we'll do is first, we'll go ahead and just take a flathead screwdriver, stick it in here, and you can use a shorter flathead. Probably be the better thing to do. This is just the one I've got out. So I'm gonna pry, and we can see that caliper kind of slid back. So That'll loosen it up enough for us to be able to remove it. Next, you'll take a 12 millimeter socket and ratchet here. I'm gonna go ahead and loosen this guy up. There, we got him loosened up now, and we've only got that one bolt here on the back, so the, it, the way it works is we've got a slide pin bolt here, and then just the slide pin up here it kind of hangs up on. So I'm gonna finish removing this bolt here. And then we'll just take our bolt out, it's a long slide pin there, and we'll just be able to pull this guy off here, and then he'll just kind of slide back like that, and I'll set him here off to the side. Now, we've got these two pads you're gonna remove, and that's pretty much all there is to taking those brake pads off. Just remember, we have the pad with the wear indicator here on the inside, so just remember that, or take note of how they actually come off. And then, I'll go ahead and set these guys down here, and the next thing I'll show you here is how we're going to get this rotor off. But before I do that, I'll go ahead and talk to you about the rotor here in just a second. Alright, we have now reached the most important segment of this video. Please do not skip over this part of the video. It's important for you to hear what I've got to say about rotors. And it's important to assure that after you've done your brake repair, your car will be safe to drive. So, we've got a few different options here when it comes to dealing with your rotors. You can either replace your rotor, have your rotor resurfaced, or you can keep and use your current rotor as is. Now, first I'm going to go over replacing the rotor. It is an absolute must to replace the rotor if its measurement is below the minimum thickness threshold to ensure your car is safe to drive. What I'm going to describe here in just a second whether you want or don't want to replace the rotor, that's up to you. Affordability and comfort is at hand. But if it is below the minimum thickness threshold, there's no other way about it. You must replace the rotor. Okay, so now that we understand that, and here in just a second, I'll show you how to measure it and be able to tell whether it's below the threshold or not. But now we're going to talk about turning your rotors. Now, there's a few, there's a couple reasons you could turn your rotor, and that's to keep your present rotor. And you can pay about $10 to Napa or O'Reilly 
where they have a brake lathe and they will turn your rotor for you. It's, it's a cheaper option than buying a whole new rotor. And the reason you'd want to do that is if you've wore your brake pads down metal to metal and the metal pad is wedged in grooves there and it's all torn up, then you don't want to put new pads on that torn up surface with your old rotor. So you'd want to have your rotor resurfaced and that's to ensure longevity for your new brake pads. The other reason to have your rotors resurfaced at a parts store is if you're having vibration problems with your rotors. That is, if you're driving down the highway and you apply the brake pedal and you feel your brake pedal vibrating. If you don't like that, that would be a good reason to have your rotors turned. But if you're really particular, just keep in mind that when the rotors are thinner, they're more likely to develop that warpage problem because what happens is you'll be driving down the road you'll run through a big puddle of water and the water will splash on the hot rotor and it'll warp the rotor the thicker the rotor is or the newer the rotor is it's going to be less likely to develop this problem so resurfacing the rotor if you have that problem will fix the problem but it'll come back faster so if you have the extra money and you really don't want that problem you can go ahead and just throw money at it and just get a new rotor every time but if you want to see the problem go away and risk it coming back or not it may or may not come back you can go ahead and turn it and get out of the situation cheaper and be more comfortable now the last option is to just keep your rotor and put new brake pads on that is a very acceptable option and that's what I do about 80% of the time again as long as the rotor is above the minimum threshold because if it's not it's not going to be safe to drive so it's okay to put new pads on your old rotor if it's smooth like this you can see right here as long as it's a semi smooth surface you can go ahead and put the new brake pads on it's really fine so those are the three options that you have replacing resurfacing or just keeping your old one and again most of the time most people are just fine keeping their old rotor and putting new pads on top of their old rotor one more thing I almost forgot to use rotors that cause vibration they're safe to drive it's just a uncomfortable thing the unsafe thing is the below the minimum thickness but rotors that cause vibration are safe to drive and also this minimum thickness number if I don't tell you exactly what the number is here in just a second you can find it at your parts store they'll they'll give you a discard thickness number on your rotor so keep that in mind too okay guys and the minimum thickness or discard thickness number for this rotor is going to be 8.5 millimeters so I'm just gonna take my tool like this right here I'm gonna close down on it and it's reading about 10 millimeters so this rotor is gonna be fine so next thing I'll show you how to do is we're gonna to want to remove this remove this caliper bracket and then I'll go ahead and show you how to remove this rotor we've actually got a drum inside this rotor here so it's kind of interesting here in just a second we'll see what's going on inside Okay guys, and the way this works is we've got two 14 millimeter bolts sitting back here. We got one on this side and one on this side. So I'm just going to take my, my socket and ratchet here. I'm going to get them set up on that bolt and I'm going to go ahead and break them loose there. And then I'm going to zip them off here if the good Lord is willing, if they're not rusted on that too bad. Oh, and there goes one of my clips. it's rusted on there pretty good you may find it beneficial to take you some PV blaster and spray it on the end of the threads so you can if you pee back there you may be able to see that we'll see if I can my tool it's, it's on there pretty good so it's not gonna work for that one I was able to just zip that one right off and now we can see that caliper is gonna come right off there it's just stuck on that one bolt down there so I'm gonna take off that other bolt and then you'll see me take the bracket off and I'll show you how to pull this caliper right off. Okay guys, and once you got that last bolt off, it's just gonna kinda come off right like that. And then basically all we gotta do to take this rotor off here is we're just gonna pull on it. Make sure your e-brake is unapplied. Make sure it's not pulled up in that position right there. And then, because we have a drum setting inside, so we're just gonna grab a hold of it. And it could be on there pretty good like it is right now so you're just gonna have to wiggle it oh, and there we go so you're just gonna rock it back and forth and you may find it useful too to just kind of hit in there with the hammer kind of break it loose if it's rusted on there if you look up let's see fix book drum remove 
or fixed book stuck on drum, something like that, you'll find a video showing you how to remove one of these guys that's really stuck on there tough. So now, that's pretty much all there is to removing this rotor. So basically, we'd go and take our new rotor and set it back on there. <coughs> all right, it's really a rotor slash drum because we got some drum brakes here as well. And I'm not gonna be touching on these today, but I will just, for the sake of giving you some kind of knowledge here, you're just gonna take some dikes, push, twist, and pop that thing out there. Um, you may want to look up a video specifically for doing this if you've never done one of these before. I'll just give you an idea just to kind of let you know if you're looking at doing this job what you want to do. We've got a spring down here and a self adjuster down here. We've got two springs up here and a holding guy right here. So we'd remove all that and our shoes would come right off. But other than that, that's all I'm going to give you for today. Like I said, you may be able to find another video out there showing you how to do this. It's real similar to your regular drum brakes. I have quite a few drum brake videos. You can search Facebook drum and it'll show you some similar videos of how to do something like this. So, but that's pretty much it. So now we'll take your new or resurfaced rotor and we'll set them back on here like so. And then I'll go ahead and put everything back together and I'll show and tell you some of the things you need to know when putting the rest of the brake things back on your car. Okay guys, and one thing I failed to mention too, also, so we got a, a dual braking system kind of going on here. We got the drums and the disc brakes. So you might be wondering, well, what actually happens? How does it work? What's going on when I'm braking and when I'm doing all this stuff? So basically what we've got going on is the drum inside here is only going to, it's only going to be working when you're applying your e-brake. and. The disc brakes here, that's when you're actually depressing the brake pedal. You're stopping, you're driving down the road and you're stopping. The disc brake is going to be doing the work there. And like I said, the drums here is going to be only for the parking brake. So basically, the, the drum brakes here probably almost last for the life of the car because really that's all it's going to be doing there. And so mainly you're just going to be changing these pads and your rotor here from time to time when it needs to be replaced. So if you was wondering how it worked and what you needed to change when changing your rear brakes, 90% of the time you're going to be replacing these pads and this rotor when it drops below that discard thickness number. All right guys, and we actually did decide to go with the new rotor there, but the next thing you'll want to do is go ahead and set your pad up here right there on the piston and we're going to compress this piston back with the c-clamp right here so i'm just going to kind of slowly compress that guy back here just about how you see me do it right there and then we'll have that piston compressed all the way back so now when we go to put the new brake pads on our caliper will be ready to slip right on over top of those brand new brake pads with our caliper bracket Okay, and the next thing we'll do here, guys, is we'll go ahead and slip our bracket back on over here, and we're gonna go ahead and grab both your 14 millimeter bolts. I'm gonna stick my head behind there and kind of watch what I'm doing while I'm doing it. And I'm just gonna thread both my bolts in there, and then I'm gonna run both those bolts down. And I went ahead and got both my bolts started again right here and right here is where that it's really it'd be difficult for me to get back in there to actually show you so there I got the one side hooked up and now there we go I ran both those down and the next thing I want to do is I'm gonna show you about how tight you want it I'm gonna go ahead and get my regular ratchet on the end of there and so basically right now it's just snugged And what you want to do is I'm going to get on this bolt right here. And it's it's a little more than snug down, but you're going to want to pull it about as tight as you're going to see me. Right about like that. So you're going to pull really hard and it's going to come to a stop. Just give it about as much as a tug as you saw me do right there. It's about how tight you want it. And then I'm just going to tighten this one as well. So about the amount of force you saw me exert there, if that's even possible, that's about how tight you want. Now, I'm going to go ahead and put those brand new brake pads on here as well. Okay, and here's our new brake pads. And before we go ahead and set those on, what we're going to do is we'll take some of this disc brake quiet lubrication or grease here. And we're just going to apply some of this grease here to the end of the, the pad here, 
I'll do it to both sides and then I'll go ahead and install my new brake pad here and just remember uh, concerning that back brake pad here we got our new back one here and there's a wear indicator on this side and on this side for both the new pads so take your old brake pad and just make sure that you have the wear indicator on the right side when going to put that new rear brake pad or inner brake pad in so I'm gonna go ahead and just dab that guy up and install him in here as well and if the, if the metal shims or clips come out you can just reinstall them it's not that big of a deal stick them in there like that and now since we've compressed our piston back there this guy should just fit back on I'm gonna go ahead and set him in there and he's just gonna slide like that and then he's just gonna slide right over that piece he should and our pin was getting in the way so make sure that you slip this pin if he's he's slipped that way too much just make sure you push him all the way back so he's out your way so then you can set the caliper back there. Now we're gonna take that long bolt we got, it's a 12 millimeter, just stick him back in there. And then we'll just go ahead and work him back in. I'll zip him on there and show you how you wanna make sure you have him snug down there as well. Okay, so I just basically about snugged that bolt down there. And this one you're gonna wanna be a, a little more gentle with, so I'm gonna go ahead and get my ratchet on here and just right about there. As you can see, I wasn't struggling. My hand wasn't shaking because I was putting so much force on it. Just run it all the way down and then just kind of snug about a half a half, or I'm sorry, a quarter, a quarter turn. So about 12 and a half degrees, just kind of snugging in there. It doesn't have to be super extra tight. The caliper bracket is a little bit more important. You want to snug it down more. So that's about how tight you want it back. Now we're pretty much about ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and put this wheel on and I'll tell you something else here in just a second. Okay, and now I'm just putting my wheel back on here. And another thing you guys need to know about putting everything back together is once you've done this, you do want to make sure you go ahead and depress the brake pedal all the way down because your caliper piston is not going to be applied all the way. So you're not going to have that braking power you need until you just depress the brake pedal down all the way there. And then you'll have that clamping force because then your pads will be touching your brand new rotor. So. And also remember, if you're doing this yourself, you may see some smoke on coming from your wheel on the wheel that you did. That's just because you did it yourself. And when you take it to the shop, they drive it around and test it for you. So you generally don't see that smoke. So just, just letting you know that's, that is normal. So now I'm just going to put these lug nuts on. And if you're interested in torquing them on there, I think it's 85 foot-pounds. But I'm going to use my torque stick here for my little impact gun to put them back on here. And... Other than that, that's gonna conclude the video. So if you want, you can go ahead and skip over this part and watch me shoot the laptop right here at the end of this video. It's about to happen in 30 seconds, but I'm just gonna go ahead and put this on in. Also, it's important the, the way you do it. You're gonna wanna kinda do it in a star pattern like you're seeing me do here. And like I said, I was gonna use that torque stick. I'm not just gonna put it on there like that, so. So that's it. That's it for today's video. I thank y'all for watching and I'll see you next time. Also, don't forget to put that cap on and let your car down. Take your jack stand out first before you let the car down. Thanks and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching guys and don't forget to subscribe so you can catch all my new videos which publish Mondays and Fridays at 9 a.m. Pacific Time, 10 a.m. Mountain Time, 11 a.m. Central Time, 12 p.m. Eastern Time and I will see you then.